Well, we're just going to chat for a bit, I guess. Oh, you can change the uh, the text. We can we're do that. just going to do that. Hey, that's a great idea, Rich. Why would you sound like a game show host? <laughs> hey, Rich, that's a great idea. Welcome back, everyone. Oh, my God. We the, got key, the keyboard. It's way over here, oh, Rich. Oh, God. There you go. You did it. How do I fit Warhammer 40,000 <laughs> Space Marine in there? <laughs> You know, I'm just gonna do the full title <laughs> and just make it really, really tidy. tidy. Yeah, or else you could do like Warhammer 4000 nope. and then under. Oh. We're doing the full title. Great, that's great. Hey, everybody, that was very strange uh, how the game broke, but hey, there we go. Uh, but here we go. Here we go. Here no, we go. Other, here we go. What no. do you, the other Whoa. way? Um, did anyone in the chat? see the sensate christmas special i finally got around to watching that which if you are a fan of sensate is fucking phenomenal well uh you haven't seen sensate right no no i fucking love it those wachowskis do they know how to visually tell a story just have it hang <laughs> <laughs> That's great, Rich. I love it. I love it. Thank you. Oh, you like my shirt? Do you like my? Uh, uh, this is this was a, a Christmas present that I got myself. It's uh, it's my Symmetra shirt. Just put forty k. This is funnier. Or sorry, your shirt. It's oh no, they they saw my shirt. It's a Symmetra shirt from Overwatch. It's a big robot hand. I don't know what Symmetra is. She's a character in Overwatch. Okay. Okay. And it's great. Are they still, like, regularly adding characters to Overwatch? Is that how that works? Uh, in, no, I, well, they just added a character. They're still working on stuff. They just added a new map. Okay. Uh, they just did their Christmas thing. Uh, they just uh, they just had a big old kerfuffle about a gay character. You, you probably didn't hear about this because you don't care yeah. about Overwatch. Yeah. They put out a comic book. Okay. Uh, every once in a while for, like, backstories for characters. And uh, Tracer, the fast one, the the girl who's on the cover, uh -huh. is is a gay. She's, okay. she's one of the gays. And it was just like, oh, just part of this Christmas story. She had a girlfriend that she was buying a gift for. And okay, great, yeah, totally no big deal. Uh, could you believe me when I say some people on the internet flipped the fuck out? Mm, yeah. Yeah. Some people flipped out. And then some people flipped out you, over people flipping out. No, you just ignore the first flip out. Exactly. Exactly. That's what most people did. That really got out of hand. Some, pe some people, it really got out of hand for some people. And uh, it's fine. You know why? Because it, it doesn't change how she plays. Uh, she, you know, like you can still play as Tracer and she doesn't play any more or less gay than she was. Her character doesn't have to automatically stop and make out with a lady. You know what? They added that mechanic into the public <laughs> test region, into the beta. And they took it out real fast. It was really awkward. <laughs> Just, oh, shit. <laughs> That's great. Wouldn't that be the worst? <laughs> If your character had to stop and make out with every one of the of the gender they were attracted to, like, fuck, <laughs> fuck, is that true? People, some people were wanting refunds because Tracer was gay. That's funny. Uh, it was uh, the comic book uh, was uh, banned from release in Russia yeah. because yeah. they have they have yeah. uh, laws against uh, what they consider to be gay propaganda. I know. So I thought that was interesting. Everyone was expecting, actually, there is a Russian character in the game. A big butch lady with dyed pink short hair. And everyone was expecting that to be... It's not as bad as Uganda. What's it? Uganda? Like? I don't know if it ever went through. There were, there's going to be a law to make uh, being gay uh, punishable by the death penalty. Oh, right, right, absolutely. Way bad. Yeah. Way bad. Because, you know, the Christian... Uh, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Missionaries there. Mm -hmm. You know, had a lot of influence. And, you know, gays are horrible. Gays are horrible. <laughs> Jesus doesn't like the gays. And right. Then suddenly they want to execute the gays. Weird. They're doing God's work, Jack. They're doing God's doing work. Doing God's work. Absolutely. 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 But, uh, yeah, they're, I mean, they're still working on Overwatch. I finally got a chance to play. I hadn't played in a while, Overwatch, and I got a chance to play the other day. Oh, it still feels good. Still love that Overwatch. Why don't we get to some tips here? 
get to some tips here from Ragged Scribe. Old news flashes. They put a Dr. Grabowski in XCOM 2. Well, what happened? What, Did you what? know that? They put a Dr. Grabowski in XCOM 2. Well, that's fantastic. That's great. <laughs> Uh, the Cracked Podcast put you on their list of great things they discovered in 2016, specifically Half in the Bag. Great. Cool. Cool. That's great. That's great. We love it when people like the things I don't do. believe Crack didn't discover us until 2016. There was a freaking Plinket reference in something they did years ago. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they were talking about like, First Contact. And they mentioned the Plinket reviews. Well, maybe they knew about Plinket, but they didn't know about I'll Half take the, in the Bag. I'll, I'll take the plug. <laughs> well, you know, maybe they're like, oh... If you guys didn't know, the Plinket guys do half in the bag. You know, okay. You know, one of those kind of things. Uh, Atomic Mousetrap says, I watched Deadly Prey. Forgetting you guys did it on Best of the Worst. The movie feels like a 90-minute setup to a punchline of <laughs> ripping that guy's <laughs> arm off, and I'm okay with it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Deadly Prey was great. Remember Deadliest Prey? It was fine, too. Or Deadlier? No. What was Deadly or Prey? Deadliest was it? Dead? No, I think it was Deadliest. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. Gobbledygook says, I'll tweet a pick Friday for Inauguration Day, but I have a copy of the Jabba the Hutt Art of the Deal comic next to Donald the Hutt's Art of the Deal book. Best orange third-party gangsters ever. Uh, the Blue Blaze says, Rich, I need your help. Yeah. BBC is showing marathons of Star Trek Voyager. And I'm not sure whether or not I should bother watching it. I've never seen it, but haven't heard good things. Is it any good? No. Voyager in general? Or overall? Occasionally, Voyager rises to the level of mediocrity. Mm -hmm. Look, if you haven't seen it, watch it, and you'll find out. And then just stop watching once you've decided, yeah, this is crap. There, I think there's some good in there. It's not Very little good. There's, it's very not little. worth it. It's not worth it. There's, there's like, how many episodes would you say are good? There's like, I out have. of seven seasons, what are they, like five <laughs> episodes that are good? Yep, you got it. <laughs> you got it. There's a handful. There's a handful. Not, it's yeah. not worth watching the whole series for the five good episodes. Year of Hell is the one where they did what they should have been doing the whole series, which is worth... It was really tough, and they were low on supplies. They were oh, dying. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was a good one. What was that one? Uh-huh. Uh, what else was good? What yeah. else was good? I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think, Rich. Uh, but seven of them. Yeah, she had boobs. I get it. And a tight outfit. I get it. I get it. She had boobs and a tight outfit, Rich. Wasn't there... Oh, you know, I kind of liked, uh, I think we talked about this before, Not these aren't good episodes, these are medi mediocre to fine episodes. The, that alien race, the hunter race, who was super into their um, holodeck technology. And they, they, <sighs> they became, like, they tried to turn the whole of Voyager into a holodeck. That was a fun episode. It was a mediocre episode. Yeah, mediocre to fine. <laughs> fine. <laughs> I, I guess what we're saying is don't bother. If it's on BBC right now, don't bother. Watch something else. Hmm. Okay. Pawn79 says, Jack, I'm the bassoon buffoon from Twitter. I apologize for sending us down the rabbit hole looking for your bassoon quip. I appreciate your and the RLM fans' help. Here's $2. Thank you, Pond. You know, the, the rough part was... I can, I could have, I, I remembered myself saying it, blah, 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 there's a bassoon. And, and so I knew I had said it. And because you had planted the idea that I said it in the best of the worst, I, I assume that to be true. So it's, it's, it, there's just so much stuff. There's so much stuff where we talk rich and people want to keep track of it all. What are the other good Voyager episodes? They, 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 the Sarah Silverman's in one. That's a shitty episode. That's totally... with yeah, Ed Bagley Jr. Is, yeah. yeah, that's a yeah. shitty episode. Yeah. But you know what? Sarah Silverman's in it. That's fun. And Ed Bagley Jr. 
I'm, you know what? I'm sure there are a couple other good ones, but no, it's. Hmm. Space Jack 2084 says regarding Batman versus Captain. They met in a JLA Avengers with the predictable result. They exchanged some light blows to take each other's measure, then decided it would take too long and teamed up without a fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. This is one of those where I think Batman has it. Thinking about it more. He's got gadgets. He's got more kung fu. He has the art of deception. Gobbledygooks. Did you see that Sony is releasing a theatrical animated feature Spider-Man movie with Miles Morales this December? I'm looking forward to seeing what interesting things Sony helps fund. So Miles Morales made it to the big screen before Batman Beyond did. Animated. Okay. Animated. Okay. Okay. So Batman Beyond has beat it by several years. <laughs> because there's an animated Batman Beyond. In theaters? Movie. Huh? In theaters? Didn't that come out in theaters? I don't think so. My vet had a limited release. I don't know. And it was straight to DVD. I don't know. Eh. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> eh. They stopped releasing animated Batman films after... Um, Mask of the Phantasm. A Mask of the Phantasm, which I don't think did that well in the theaters. Oh, yeah? Regardless of what you think of it. I don't think it did that well in the theaters. Okay. You know... Uh, There's no game yet. It's downloading. It's downloading. So we're just talking about random bullshit. I, I think it's fine that Sony's releasing their own full-length animated feature. I've been so disappointed with DC's animated shit. It just... Not even not even the story or the content, which I haven't seen any of them. It just looks like garbage. I think their animations, their DC's new animation standard looks like garbage. Mm -hmm. And I'm afraid that Sony's going to pull some similar shit. And due to budget restraints, the Spider-Man's going to look like garbage too. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, like anim you know, I like animation. I want it to look good. I'm not particularly attached to Miles Morales. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's got some good stories. He's got some good stuff. I didn't care enough to keep reading him. I'll tell you that. As, as a character, he's just a stranger to me. Right. So, right. Eh. Hmm. Eh. He's got some interesting stuff. By the way, Jack. What? And everybody. Yeah. I did it. What did you do? XCOM. Classic. Zero soldier deaths. Congratulations. I took a screen capture, of, like the final <laughs> screen, and I, I posted it through the, through the Steam. Yeah. Second, second comment. Enjoy it now. You're going to die of cholesterol in two years. Like, that's just shit all over my parade. What the fuck? I, I deleted it, but... Yeah. Jesus Christ. Some people are dickheads. I know. I know. Just completely shit my victory. Hmm. Dickheads. Months of, of trying to pull that off. And you did. And I did you it. You did it. Someone's got to be an asshole. <laughs> Typical. Hey. First Typical. Of all, first of all, Rich, congratulations. Thank you. I know you were working towards that. And you did it. And you got the screenshot to prove it. That's the important part. You remember to take a screenshot. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the internet. Yeah. 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 Why are we congratulating Rich? Rich beat XCOM on classic difficulty. And what is classic difficulty? This is, this is the second hardest. If there's one harder difficulty. Is it, well, I guess it's the third hardest. Four difficulty levels. Oh, okay. But it's a tough difficulty level, and I, I beat it on Iron Man, which means no reloading your saves. Mm -hmm. Deaths are permanent. Yeah. And I did not lose a single soldier. Or a country, either. <sighs> nice. It's a damn fine XCOM run. None of your soldiers died, which is very easy for, <laughs> for your soldiers to die in XCOM, <laughs> if you don't know. Uh, so that's why we are congratulating him. Uh, yes, Jack Trigger Joyce. I have written feature-length scripts. N nothing will ever happen with them, but I have written them. I enjoy writing. Where where, where is the pick? It's somewhere on my Steam. I don't know how these things work. Is it on this Steam? I don't know how to get a link to this. Is it on this Steam? 
Where is activity? I don't know. How, how do you find these no, things? No, go, uh, go to you. Now go to profile. Profile? Yeah. That's not going to profile, right? That's... Yeah, you should have posted it to your profile. Just anything? Maybe not. I think I just shared oh, the... Co maybe community? No? It tells you how much I care about the social aspects of Steam. Right. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. That's, there's, well, that's not me, yes. That's a friend screenshot. Yeah. So maybe your screenshot is in here as well. Was Should be. It? No. No. That's XCOM 2. Uh, maybe. Can you go Thank you. up and see if you can like just see your thread? Here we go. Oh. All right, hold on. Wait, we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna take a cheap ass screenshot, Rich. Why don't I just go into the OBS and uh, and show people? Yeah. Or I can take a picture, pics and tweets it. Ooh. Where are we at? Where are we at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Yo. Zero soldiers lost. That's the important one right there. Yeah, yeah. Zero battles lost. Yeah. Killed 662 aliens. <laughs> I don't know if that's uh, I don't know how if that's good or bad. That's that's a lot of aliens, Dad. I'll tell you what. But zero soldiers lost. Did, I did not lose a country. No. That's great. It was a fine run. A fine run. Excellent work, Commander. What have been, been right in between there? I just, <laughs> I just fucking deleted it. Because like, you hey, can, you jerk. You. <laughs> ah, you jerk. All right, we got about thirty-one seconds left. We're doing great. Dog. We're doing great, Rich. I feel like we're doing great. Fake screenshot. LOL. Get out of town. He, he did it. Not losing a country is the hardest thing there, is what people are saying. Nah, not losing a person is the hardest thing there. <laughs> not losing a country is easy. If you just my, satellite rush. My experience with XCOM is it's very easy to lose people. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's my experience, though. So. <laughs> oh, my God. All right. Oh, Ivan Zeist says, here's my last $2.00. For you, because I'll be dead from cholesterol in two years. There's no time like the present to start, people. Just you know, cut back on saturated fats, high, uh, high fiber vegetables. We're talking green leafy shit, spinach, greens, uh, broccoli. That kind of those kind of like dark green vegetables and beans. Beans are good for fiber. Fiber moves stuff through your through your intestines. That means you're pooping more regularly. Take the funny insult, Rich. You throw them out all the time. There's a time and a place. <laughs> you know, that's the thing. There's a time and a place. Sega. Count them calories. Absolutely. Get it, get it out of your system. Anyone can do it. I believe in all of you. I believe in all of you. You gotta, you gotta, you know, cut down on the sugars, which means, you know, for people like me, you gotta cut down on beer. If you gotta cut down on soda, you gotta cut down on sweets. Cut down on fats. So that means dairies. That means, you know, regular fats like, like. It's tough, but you can do it. Oh, you don't. There you go. Sega. Yeah, that guy's got things in his head too. That's got to be a, a, that's got to just be a Warhammer just a thing. head thing. The head thing. Just got uh, just a head thing. All right, that's fine. That's fine. Unless unless they get shot in the head a lot, oh. that makes sense because these are the people who aren't wearing their helmets. So what? Uh, the desktop audio came up again.
jumped up again. This, this intro is nothing at all like Arkham City. They were not influenced or inspired by it. <laughs> nothing alike. Oh, actually, wait. No, nope, that's the mic audio now. Like desktop audio went up. Uh, mic audio, we usually have it like negative three. Yeah, right there is good. And then we will never like blow out. Why have they switched? I have no idea. I have no idea, Rich. All right. All right. Tiberius Kirk, OBS has been very good to us, and OBS is a free a free piece of software that, that we have learned and has been very good to us over the years. So we're going to settle down about saying OBS sucks because I enjoy it. Are you not letting me rebind to the, the number pad? Is your, wait, oh, is, wait, there. Your numlock wasn't on. Oh. Is it plugged in? Can you rebind? D oh, what? double click to edit key bindings? Hey, all right, hey. all right. Got to read it, got to read it all. Read it all. Uh, yet OBL, OBS resets audio every time you open and crashes a bunch and confuses Rich all the time. I know, and you can't stream Coaster Tycoon games. There's some issues with OBS, but overall, I feel like it's been pretty good to us, and it is a free piece of software, even though we do give them money. Because I would feel weird about not giving OB the OBS people money, because we make money off of it, and that would that would seem weird. He is using a number pad. Yes, Rich likes using a number pad for, for first-person shooters. That's what I'm used to. Deal with it. Yep. Yep. Jack. Hi, I'm Jack. What? Jack, what? You're just saying my name. Okay, Tiberius. I'll take that. OBS is adequate. It sure is adequate. There are other there are other pieces of software to stream with. Um, most of them either cost money or and like actually some of them cost like monthly fees. You know, like pay a little bit every month to keep using it. So no. Oh, all right. Yeah, there's XSplit and there's other stuff, but, you know, this is what seems to work for us. So, I'ma keep using it. Why can't I bind that to thing? Uh, no, Sin for Profit, when Rich was playing um, Dawn of War 2, he had the full keyboard. Now that he's only playing a first-person shooter, he has the number pad, so. Double-click. It, it's it. Nope. What what are you trying to hit? The the one right above the eight on the number pad, the slash. Do you think like it reads it, but there's just not a character for it? Oh, well, I want the slash because that's what I'll. Yeah, but I'll I'll just fine. We'll do a number pad nine. Okay. Uh, Master Keith, we know the title is going past the overlay <laughs> on the stream because this is a very long title, and so it's just it's just not going to fit in the box. It's called a joke. <laughs> well, yeah, there's two things in this game. There's fury mode, and then there's also furry mode, which makes it a little weird, but, you know. <sighs> <laughs> All right, here we go. We're going to play a space marine. Going to shoot some shit. Do it, Rich. The grim darkness of the far future. There is only war. <clears throat> I don't know what brought it up, but what? I was actually reading a bit about the Warhammer 40k universe the other night. Okay, that's what that's what brought the stream up. You know, right. this, these games and eh, it's an interesting universe. 
It's a yeah. weird and interesting universe. In what way? What? Give me an example. It's just the... The, the backstory of, of, of how it got this way with the weird religious thing where they worship like a, a basically a corpse. Okay. Xenos invasion in progress. Recommended course of action. War. Exterminate us. Deploy capital weaponry. They, they've... They have this technology, but they don't understand it anymore. Oh, I yeah, like that. I like yeah. That. Okay, I like that concept. They've they've used that concept in other sci-fi things. So it's 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 completely stagnated, and when things are like you know broken, it can't necessarily replace them. <laughs> oh, I like that. Deploying the Ultramarines. <laughs> That's silly. I like it. It's silly, but great. The Ultra Marines. Imagine, imagine mixing Dune with Lord of the Ring mixed with Medieval Inquisition. Yeah, that could be cool. It's Asimov's Foundation series with orcs. <laughs> <laughs> That makes me kind of not like it. Like, why are orcs in space? Space orcs is what's weird to me. I like my aliens all alien-y, you know? They, they think machines have spirits inside of them, and they pray and do rituals. <laughs> See, I like that. Yeah. That's fun. Yeah. I like the idea of someone praying to a toaster. <laughs> Ominous golden brown us. He's he's got two of the things in his head. Oh, that must mean he's 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 a captain. He's double plus good. There's also demons and space hell, and it's metal as fuck. <laughs> well, I'm down with metal. <laughs> I think this is probably the only game in the series that I could probably get on board with as well, like a first-person shooter. Yeah. So, you know what? We'll see how Rick likes it. I've played it before. I actually like it. Oh, okay. Years ago, when this came out, I actually ended up playing it. Oh, okay. The end boss is terrible, though. The end boss is a quick time event. Mm. Everything, you know, other than that, yeah. pretty decent. Pretty decent. Yeah. Any ramen updates? What? That it's delicious and I eat it all the time? I eat it all I can? There's a good, there's a good ramen place, uh, like, 30 minutes away from me, and there's a good ramen place, like, 20 minutes away from me. Neither are optimal because I'd love a good ramen place walking distance, but one is easier to get into, so I usually go that one. Space Orcs! Went and got some pho the other day. It's pretty good. Forgot, forgot how good pho is. Pho. Oh, it's third person. Third person, first person. Oh, reloading's a thing. Uh, usually. Usually reloading's a thing. Fuck yeah. I'm just mm -hmm. kind of getting used to my controls here. I would love that. I would love ramen everywhere. There we go. If there, if there was a, if there was a ramen place within walking distance to my house, and there's a lot of restaurants within walking distance to my house, I might just not eat anything else for an entire week and just have ramen every night because I love it so hard. After that week, I'd probably get, you know, a little tired of it, but moo oh, man. Moo oh, man. Why do I hate pho? <laughs> I heard you like ramen. Why do you hate pho? I love it. Any good Laksa places? I don't know what Laksa is. Oh, 
Yes, ramen is the like sift to, to my diet. Sorry, I just bound this, and I don't remember what I have bound to what. Uh, that's all right. Yeah, take, that's what this. That's what this level is about, Rich. Learn the controls. Wait, 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 wait. Come back. What, what we got? Where we got? What don't I have stunned here? Well, you're you're just on your combat knife, so like, see the arrows next to combat knife. Number pad f five for an execution. <laughs> Went to a mall in Singapore, and there were like four ramen joints right next to each other. It was so good. Oh Jesus! No, and I know you know you you go to certain places like like L.A. and you trip over ramen places, but here we got two. We got two ramen places, one out in the suburbs, and one that's like crazy hipsterish on the north side of downtown, and it's only open to weird hours, certain days of the week. And there's always a line outside, and I'm just not cool enough to go there, so. Yeah, whatever. I go out to the suburbs. It's also very easy to find dudes in L.A. Yeah, buff dudes. In L.A. <laughs> Space Orcs Chi? I've never heard of Chi. I don't even know how to pronounce that. T S H I Chi. You have different combos for melee weapons. And you gotta switch up the stuns and swipes and then you get uh, like Doom and you can execute him for HP. Rich. Okay. Your beard must be this long. Oh, there's my. There it is. Figured it out. No. Oh. There it is. Boom. Boom. I love cheese. Yeah, great. Off to get beers. Well, good luck, real net boy. Ramen taco. Ooh. No, I had to, and I, I had something at the pho restaurant that was it was kind of like it was kind of like pho but without the um the the liquid portion of it without the soup portion of it and so it's just like this pork sausage over rice noodles with a bunch of other different flavor combos it was really great but it didn't have it wasn't in a bowl it didn't have the liquid component of pho. look at that big goofy orc <laughs> well that big goofy gun with like the big teeth on the back it is you know what this game might just be silly enough to be fun Tap J to perform a combat roll. T S H I minus T. It's she. Okay, she. She is a joke from the Star Wars review. Oh, is it? Sorry. I probably watched the Star Wars review, but I probably didn't just because I knew I agreed with you guys over our dislike of the Star Wars. So I don't even know if I watched it. 40k is silly, which is why it's hilarious to me when people take it so goddamn seriously. Yeah. I feel the same way about Star Wars. <laughs> Star Wars is also a silly universe, yes. I don't know if it's this level of silly with, like, you know, orcs in space. There but... are four salamanders, Jack. There's what? Four salamanders. Where? In Star Wars. There are four salamanders? There are four salamanders, yes. Four salamanders. Oh, sure. Yeah, you're right. Force vampires. There are giant fish that... Force ghosts. There's a giant fish that, like, pilots a whole spacecraft. Yeah, you're right. You're right. It's a silly universe. It's a very silly universe. Jack and Rich, Star Wars fans in denial. We, we, uh, I, I don't mean to speak for Rich Evans, but I enjoy some of the Star Wars movies. I don't know if that makes me a fan. I mean, I'm a fan. I enjoy some of the Star Wars movies. The first two are pretty damn good. 
Yeah. Jedi is adequate where it needs to be. I even, I, you know what? I'm, I'm on record. I like the Force Awakens. I, I'll stand up for the Force Awakens. The prequels, relative to their budgets, are the worst movies ever made. <laughs> the Force Awakens yeah. was, yeah, yeah, yeah. His characters don't suck. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I Rogue One was. Mm-hmm. That's Star Wars. You got it, Rich. I'm, I'm with you. I'm, I'm with you most of the way. I, I know I, I liked Force Awakens a lot more than you did, but... Yeah. The characters didn't suck. Hmm? That's what they needed to do. After the prequels, yep. they, needed us to give, they needed to give us someone we, we cared if they lived or died. Yep. Mission accomplished. Boom. Boom. Uh, Kylo Ren, interesting character. Yeah, he's a fun bad guy. Yeah. I, I know this is something you mention a lot. Like, it's fun that he's kind of a fuck-up bad guy. <laughs> he's, he's not a clone of Darth Vader, but he's trying to be. He, but he's kind of a punk and about he f- it. And he fails at it, <laughs> and that makes him interesting. Agreed. Uh, agreed. I forget who said it in your in your Rogue One review, but whoever whoever mentioned that Rogue One felt like a big budget fan film, mm-hmm. yeah, is the most on point criticism of that movie. If you've ever seen any like YouTube shorts of people doing lightsaber fights, stretch stretch that out for two and a half hours, and you got Rogue One. These people take this very seriously. If we go to Fox Point, there's a Laksa there at Peking Chev. I can't remember the last time I've been up to Fox Point, I'll be honest with you. Right, I don't have an aim button. You what? I need an aim button, Jack. What's an aim button? A button I would hold to... Oh, there we go. Why is it most... All right, well, I'll, 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 I'll deal with it. <laughs> yes, that actress for Jin, she was a charisma black hole, but also... She didn't, she didn't no character to like be drawn to either. She she might be a fine actress, but they didn't give her character anything to do. It's not gonna let me rebind, is it? Mid game? Yeah. I don't know. I want I want to switch my stun with my aim button. Mm. I got a feeling I'm gonna be using stun a lot. And the aim, it's like a sticky aim. So you don't have to hold it down. It doesn't oh. need to be. It doesn't need to be in the most comfortable position. Ah, gotcha. And that that could be true, Hunchback Jack. Jack, it was. I mean, there were script problems. She. I've never seen. I don't know if I've seen that Felicity Jones act in anything else. So I can't comment on her as an actress. Pick up Bolta. There we go. There you go. Yes. Yes. Blow up space orcs. Daddy likes. <laughs> uh, it got weird. Moonlight is greater than La La Land. I have a feeling. I haven't seen La La Land yet, though. I do really want to because I like musicals. You know, I just wasn't. I just wasn't that into Moonlight. One what? of those slice of life kind of no real story, but. You know, deep character piece movies that I'm just I just don't care about. Is this where I came from? Uh, where am I going? Oh. Well no, there's new people here, you're fine. So the acting is great and you know I just don't I, I just don't care. I was so bored with Moonlight. Yeah, this game's neat. Yeah? Yeah. Good. This looks neat. This looks like a good game. So I would probably prefer La La Land better just because I like musicals. But I I can appreciate all of the really good acting in Moonlight. I can. They like they they got it. They nailed it. Those characters, those actors uh 
those actors embodied those characters. That was that was great. Great acting. I personally need a little story. I need a little give me a little story. Give me a little bit of a story to uh, <laughs> to latch on to and, and then but you know Moonlight's good, it's just not my thing. I'm officially down with Space Marine. Alright. Do it. Blow it up. Blow it up. Now, you know, some people some people like going to a movie and just, you know, paying attention to one thing. Like, ah man, oh the cinematography. That was the thing with like the girl with the dragon tattoo. Did you ever see that? No. Like some of the most beautiful cinematography you will ever see in a movie. Gorgeous. Wonderful camera movement. Wonderful wonderful uh lens as art statement. But the story is so lame. It's basically like an episode of CSI no, Scandinavia. No, no, no. The acting is good. Do your move, you dork. <laughs> you dork. That one, yes. You dork. Why do you want cutscenes with story and movies, but not video games? Ah, I get it. You just called him a dork. Is a dork who kills orcs. <laughs> My name is Dork the Orc Killer. <laughs> slayer, Jack. The Orc Slayer. You're not, orc, you're not an orc killer, you're an orc slayer. I am Sir Dork the Orc Slayer. I want to see someone get one of those things in their head. You know, do we get to see that? Like, how do you earn a dot on your head? <laughs> That's what I'm most curious about. Is why do these guys have dots on their head? Is it like a is it a rank thing? Yeah, uh, that's what I'm assuming. I'm referring to the American version of Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, the David Fincher film. That's my only good voice. That's my favorite voice. That's my Lionel voice. I love that voice. That is the voice I like doing the most. That is my Lionel from Pork Pork in Space. One of my favorite voices. Service studs are meant to show how long they've served. Huh? I want to see, is, is there a, a scene where someone gets the stud? Where I get to see the process of how the stud is, is put on their face. I would love that. Sedona's picked up local Imperial Guard communications. They survived under the shadow of that gun. I want to know how. I just picked up a floating skull robot. Ooh. Is that good? Yeah, I'm assuming it's great. Great. Oh, and apparently in all of, of Warhammer lore, there is no scene where we get to see someone get the dot on their head. Really? <laughs> what are my opinions on Jim Carrey? I'm okay with Jim Carrey. I don't like him. He's annoying. Rich doesn't like him. He thinks he's annoying. I think he's fine. I, I, I remember. Fuck, man. I remember in Living Color. He was the greatest. Oh, my butt talks. I'm weird. Uh. Yep. I love. So I loved him. I loved him. I mean, Ace Ventura was a was a, a mainstay at the at the Packard House. Pet detective. Uh, and then he got a little weird, and a little creepy. But. I like him. Uh, Renegade Akira says, Hey, again, guys. Your ramen talk got me thinking. What's the weirdest, grossest food you've eaten? I tried a bollet egg. 
once and threw up so fast. Google it at your own risk. LOL, Nerdbox subscription. You need anything super weird? Me? No. No. And I know you have food allergies. Weirdest thing I ever ate was a jalapeno popper, Jack. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, I've eaten bugs. The um. We've all accidentally eaten bugs at some point. No, no, they like it was like uh, mealworms fried up. I'm in not butter. shocked. I'm not shocked. And you know what? They're pretty fucking good. Uh, that same party uh, had uh, chocolate covered cockroaches. And your wife had to kiss you afterwards, yeah. did she? <laughs> did she? Did she make you brush your teeth? I'm sure not directly afterwards. Uh, oh no, actually, she wasn't with me. That was. Oh, I, all right. I was. I was out of. I was out of state. <laughs> she was not with me when I was eating bugs. Um, I've eaten lots of weird shit. Bugs are just tiny lobsters, right? Uh, yeah, I've, I mean, weird meat, weird animal meat, kangaroo, alligator, that sort of stuff. Oxtail, which is delicious. Captain, I'm in uh, position. I'm trying to think of like the absolute. Uh, the prod bugs is the absolute weirdest, but I mean, like, like you know, octopus, raw octopus, that kind of stuff. Is there a mod that actually lets you wear a helmet? You want to? You want to be a grunt? Oh, but nope. that's that's one of my people. You're not supposed to shoot him. You? you know, you got this badass armor, but then yeah. you just leave your head exposed. <laughs> Again, Rich, it's because you're an important character. How else are they going to know you're important? I understand that. They can be an they can be an important helmet. They could, <laughs> they could be. Also, like I love how you know this older guy has the red sash on his. Yeah. Yours has a little more ornamentation. The new guy doesn't have anything like that. Yeah, yeah. They yeah. put some thought into their into their world here. Unlike Star Wars. Bum, bum, bum. Have I ever been hunting? Yes, I've been hunting. Have I ever killed anything hunting? No. Jack, Jack you know what that is? That looks like a, a s chainsaw sword. It's a chainsaw sword, Jack. Well, there you go. Or just a chain sword. When did this come out in comparison with Gears of War, and how pissed were either of the fans? Is my real Well, question. the chains... Uh, Warhammer's been around longer. This game hasn't been around longer than Gears of War. Okay. Warhammer has, and uh -huh. I'm pretty sure ch their chainsaw swords have been, have been a part of Warhammer since well before Gears of War. Okay. I'm with you. <laughs> Yes! <laughs> Chain swords vastly predate Gears of War. Well, there you go. There you go. Rich, have you ever been hunting? No. Okay. I, I don't think I can kill an animal like that. Yeah? Yeah. Eh. I don't know if I could anymore. Like, I've been hunting and just nothing came up because, like, uh, if anyone has ever been hunting or is, if, if you're curious about, like, what hunting is, uh, mostly it's sitting around <laughs> in the woods and waiting. That's most of hunting. Oh, look at that. This yeah. looks great. This is fun. This looks great. Uh, so I've spent long periods sitting in the woods waiting for animals to come and kill. I, I, I never killed any. Ever ever since my grandmother's dog died, I haven't been. I can't even. I can't even squash a, a bug. Right. Rarely, I will. A mosquito is really annoying. Sure. Sure. Yeah, yeah. But like a bug in the house, I'll try and capture it and put it outside before I kill it. So uh. I don't. I don't think I can handle a deer. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. Grandmother's poodle fell off the back porch. Oh. Broke its back. I found it after I'm not sure how long. Oh. That's but terrible. it fell onto concrete. Yeah. And its front paws were gone. Like this it had blood coming out of, out of its mouth, and the back was just completely paralyzed. Yep. Yeah. Uh, ever uh, since, ever since then, uh, that's terrible. I, I, I can't harm a hair. That's then that's fair. And an animal. And that's fair. You know what? That's fair. You know, 
I my my family came from that background. A lot of hunters, a lot of guns. Uh, and then I was a butcher for a while, as you all know. So the the were you a butcher or were you a meat cutter? Jack? I was a butcher. I really? actually I actually cut up the animals. I was the chicken guy. I cut up the chickens at my butcher shop. Could you handle a pig? Uh, I could probably get pretty close. <laughs> I could at very least like get it into chunks for the next guy, but I was the chicken guy. So I know I can still to this day disassemble a chicken pretty pretty viciously. Yep. Uh But so the prospect uh for me hunting, you know, like not only taking out a deer but bleeding it properly, you know, like that kind of stuff was interesting to me. Oh, little What are those guys in Doom? The little red guys that charge at you. <laughs> you look like that. The pinkies? The pinkies. I look like a pinky. Where is he? He blew up. It was a suicide. A suicide pinky? A suicide pinky, yes. Yeah, look at him. <laughs> uh, the difference between a butcher and a meat cutter is uh, one knows how to disassemble an animal and one knows how to take a big slice of meat and turn it into little slices of meat. Yes, one one can take apart like uh, a big uh, like a, a slab of beef. Like you get a side of ribs, and you can turn that into like s strip steaks and yeah. whatnot. The other can take the whole animal from fur, yep, and render it into steaks. Right. And, you know, bo both are equally useful, but so, like, a, a butcher will take a cow and turn it into big old chunks. And then those chunks will go out to meat cutters to turn them into individual steaks, is how it usually works. Uh. Rich, uh, apparently you're being insensitive, and Suicide Pinky is not the preferred nomenclature for that particular beast. Remember, this is a big uni a fully realized universe, and that thing has a name. What is the name of that thing? It's a Suicide Pinky. It's a Suicide. Okay, great. Perfect. <laughs> Jack will only eat animals he butchered himself. Oh, man, I would love that. I would fucking love that. There was nothing greater than working at the butcher shop. And uh, and taking home meat that I myself cut up that that was great. I knew it was fresh. I knew where it came from. At the butcher shop, we would visit the farms that had the animals, you know, like so we could you know take a look at how they were fed, that they were treating them properly to make sure that our meat was was quality. It was great. It it was great. Not that way. This way, sure. I I just you know. There, you have to respect your meat, though. You can't, you can't get your meat at the shitty farms that treat their animals like shit, because then your meat's gonna taste like shit. You gotta respect it. Respect the meat. Respect your meat. It's what gives you nourishment. Seriously, I just had dinner, but now I want steak. Yeah, sorry. Whoa. Bloodbath. <laughs> <laughs> Kick him in the face after. This looks great. Do you want to try it? Hmm? Do you want to try it? No, no, you're on a roll. You go ahead. I'm just, I'm just here. I'm not greedy. I'm just saying I might pick this up for myself. We could do a retro review. <laughs> Still thinking Project Hornet is a Jack cooking show. Oh, also, um, remind remind me uh, that there's a Project Hornet update that I can't tell you, but I can tell Rich after the stream is over. Nice. Okay, Gobbledygook says probably too late to try tonight, but I just gifted you Space Hulk Deathwing. The latest, That's the, the turn-based one. The latest, which I'm actually interested in. Yes, and Thank greatest you. Warhammer, 4K first-person shooter. This oh shit! Is, there's a, there's a whole there's a whole thing I had to do and I didn't do it. There's a new first-person shooter, Rich. 
and says it will push your graphics to the limit, though. Hope you try it. Wait, wait I thought Space Hulk was the turn-based one. They're saying Space Hulk, Hulk Deathwing is a first-person shooter. All right, all right. So thank you, Gobbledygooks. And Yonder, Yonder says, Jack, you swore to me you'd ask Rich if there was an awesome story behind this room and its current state of undress. What do you mean, undress? Uh, someone texted me a picture and said, what's the story behind this room? This room? Well, no, no, the, the, the image I'm about to show you. Oh. And it, it seemed to be from a long time ago, from well before I knew you. This apparently is the thumbnail image to some video on YouTube called, like, People Talking about Star Wars. You, you know, we used to sell a film called Gorilla Interrupted, and... Uh, yeah. Well, you still sell it, don't you? Jesus Christ, 17 years ago. Right. This is well before this I met is, This was a while ago. 16, well. 16 years ago. It was after 9-11, I think, but not by much. Yeah, uh, Yonder, Yonder, if you could uh, put that link up in the chat so everyone can see the room that Rich is about to talk about. After my grandmother had passed, we were in the process of selling her house, and you know, it was pretty much empty yeah. at that point. And... Uh, Mike's uh, Mike, Mike wants to make a movie, and he, you know, Jay, Jay comes down from you know uh, Wisconsin. It's only like the second, second maybe third time that I'd seen Jay in person, and uh, in the space of literally a week, we made a feature length motion picture, and that was the state of my grandmother's empty house after three days <laughs> of trying to film an entire feature length motion picture. So, so the mess. If you, if you're looking at this picture, you see you see Rich Evans in the foreground and a giant mess behind him. That is your grandmother's house. This is my grandmother's house. When we were trying to sell it, it was completely empty. And you were trying to sell your grandmother's house, and so Mike decided it was a good time to film a movie. Yeah. And I, I assume all you guys were staying there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, <laughs> we we filmed. <laughs> We filmed like like three days at my grandmother's house, and then three days up by Jay up in Milwaukee. Uh huh. And you know, this is when we were trying to sell my grandmother's house. So the three days we're up in Milwaukee, I get up, I come home. My uncle left a call on the answering machine. Like, yeah. They tried to show someone the house. We hadn't had time to clean it up. So they tried to show somebody the house when it looked like that. There's a phone call from my uncle. It <laughs> might be on the Gorilla Interrupted documentary with the DVD. <laughs> De- what What did you do to the house? <laughs> I'm just, my uncle. It looks like a, a 10 a, a hurricane hitting here. <laughs> they came. They tried to sell the house. <laughs> I'm sure it's still for sale. Gorilla Interrupted featuring the documentary. I think I, we might actually be out at this how point. How Not to Make a Movie. How Not to Make a Movie. It's worth it for How Not to Make a Movie. How Not to Make a Movie is a fantastic documentary. Absolutely fantastic. Uh, so yeah, get that on the, you can probably still get the digital version. You probably can. Yes. Watch that. And you can see even more footage of Rich's grandmother's house. <laughs> so there you go. Yonder, yonder. That's the story. They were asking me about it. I was like, that was way before I met the guys. I don't know. I don't know. I probably didn't meet Mike and Jay like until seven years ago. I I, I'm almost sure he would have left that call on there. I hope he did. In the documentary, yeah. probably. It's been a while since I've seen it, so. How not to make a movie is great. It sure is. Fucking dick, this is the video. I think it's. I think the video's got, like, people talking about Star Wars. And it's just yeah. you guys talking about yeah. Star Wars, yeah. Yeah, you to- you did totally destroy that house. That's great. I'm all that's left, my lord, unless my commanders rise from the grave. Jay's a nerd in it. Jay looks very different. Yes. To be fair, he was playing a nerd. Well. <laughs> <laughs> oh, maybe that's what that meant. Jay's a nerd in Gorilla Interrupted. Yeah. No. I thought. Yes, we be- all look very different. Yes, they all look very different. The call is in the t- the call is in the documentary, and I cringe every time I hear it. Oh, that's great! <laughs> that's great! <laughs> Yay! Yeah, Mike took great delight in that phone call. Oh, I bet. <laughs> um, I met them because uh, I had a friend who was friends with Jay. No, I had a friend 
who had a friend who was friends with Jay. And I made videos, and Jay and Mike made videos, and one day they needed someone to act in their videos, and they knew I made videos, so I would probably be okay to work with, and we shot a couple Grabowski's episodes. Uh, probably up on the RLM YouTube page is uh, the Grabowski's versus Frank Hammer. That is the very first time I met Jay and Mike. And we, we both made videos. And uh, so, at, you know, at the time I was making videos for Funny or Die and doing music video stuff. And we just kind of got along. And so then uh, they knew they could count on me to help them make stuff. And I knew I had them. I could count on them to help me make stuff. And we just kept doing it. It's a, it's, it's a really boring story because, like, nothing... It wasn't fate. It was people who do similar things are naturally gravitate towards each other, you know? Yeah. Jack, I was, yeah. I had a beard and long hair in that. It was a hairy gorilla in that. And that's how I learned there was no such thing as a king bee. That's right. That's right. And that's, that's when I started learning how Mike and Jay uh, make stuff, which is they just put people in front of the camera and say, yeah, this is what I want you to say, ish, or do whatever you want. But really, say what I want you to say. <laughs> I was much thicker and I had hair, yeah, yeah. Big old belly, big beard. I look very different. I do, I do look scary with that beard. I Oh, I like that death. <sighs> Every once in a while I think about regrowing my beard and I regret it immediately. It's t it's it sucks to shave all the time, but man, I hate I just don't I'm not a beard person anymore. Uh, I got a good jigger, just get the controls and a bit more comfortable. Yeah. But fun, very fun. <laughs> it looks great. I hope you get off this planet soon, though. You've been on here for a while. I'd love it if you got off the planet. Thicker. And we're, no, I was not thicker. I was fatter. I, I was much fatter. How about a different area of the same planet? Would that be acceptable? I want a different <clears throat> color palette. Is, I, uh, is, uh, that's all I'm looking for here. Is I believe we get that at some point. Something that <clears throat> is not broken buildings. And there's a lot of broken buildings in general. But we might get a different color palette. Okay, I, I, I'll settle for a different color palette. Yeah, and Josh has the beard. Like, no one's going to beat Josh's beard. And now... Rick yes, I love that one! <laughs> Chainsaw to the stomach and then punch <laughs> down on their head! That is, that is fucking fantastic! <laughs> That's got its charms, too. It's like Doom. With the, the, the glory kills. The glory kills, kills absolutely. Absolutely. Earth tones. Because they live on a planet? Because they live on... <laughs> it's, it's Earth tones because they live on a planet. Um, tired and sad. No, sorry. Anonymous says, Rich, I finally saw The Recovered. How involved with that movie were you? Zero. Do you have any fun or even terrible stories? I feel this piece of RLM history needs to be explored more. They were making a horror movie. I, be I believe there was a no Rich Evans involvement policy. They were making a serious yes. horror movie. And I can't do that. I have no. no interest in that. Right. And so I think that's fair. I can tell you uh, they, there was a screening of The Recovered. Along with other people's movies and stuff. Oh, I can take the mounted thing and just carry it with me. That's fantastic. Now you're talking. There was a screening of the recovered at a friend's house. They set up a little projector in, in, at the on the back of their house, and we, we a, a big group of us watched the recovered. Mike and Jay's serious movie. Oh, this is gonna be exciting. This is very. This is very shortly after I had met them, and you know, started doing stuff with them and uh, and hanging out and whatnot. And uh, we get to the end of the recovered, and I initiated people booing and throwing things at the screen. I, I, <laughs> I didn't much care. 
for the recovered. It had a few really uh, neat uh, horror imagery scenes. Really neat ones, but overall I did not like the recovered. I've never seen it. You've never seen the recovered? No. How dare you? Once again, no interest in horror movies. There you go. Straight horror movies. There you go. The Recovered is a serious movie. Yes, there, it's not a it's not a, a jokey movie. Uh, Jay and Mike are are barely in it. Um, it was the ending, wasn't it? Yes, the I I really really did not like the ending. Anyone who has seen The Recovered knows exactly why. I won't spoil it for anyone who doesn't. Uh, who hasn't seen it, but... Uh, it wasn't all a dream, was it? Really? Really? Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> wow. I'm shocked. That because I was sure it wouldn't be. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> it's twenty years. I know it's an old movie, so like it's spoiler free. But yeah, no. And I think we give uh, at least at least I'm sure to give uh, Jay and Mike shit for it every time the whole something has a really sucky ending thing comes up. I, I'd make sure to poke that bear, but. Sniper rifles are so boring. Ah, uh, you know, they can be fun. I want to rush in and chainsaw them, Jack. Oh, well, that's fun, too. But you know what? You get... You, look at that. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> One shot explode their head. That's fun. They joked about it in a half in the bag. Episode. Oh, I no, I know. They have a good sense of humor about it. It's just... <laughs> You know, we were all at that screening, a bunch of people are, are like, a bunch of people were film nerds, and, uh, you know, everyone knows that trope, and that came up, and it was just empty beer cans at the screen. How do they act, react when you poke fun at, at their movies? They're, they're fine with it. They, they understand. They understand the flaws. They made a choice, and, you know. It's fine. All right, let's see here. Uh, Tired Sand says, Do you think the Justice League movie will finally kill the DC cinematic universe? You might save it. You never know. You never know. Yeah. No, if if Batman versus Superman didn't, they're gonna they're gonna keep well, trying. Well, they made money. They're gonna. It, it's gonna take a loss of money before anything changes. If they're not losing money, right? Why would they? Well, so Superman made money. It it was it was a you know critical flop, but the audience liked it. Right? The producers, the studios, they don't give a shit if they're a critical failure. Oh, they well, don't they don't give a rat's ass. Well, but critical failure failure can sometimes mean bad. Uh, audience reception, you know, bad, people don't go see. It. Frequently doesn't. You know, it's actually that's more rare than you think. The the critic failure audience like that's that's more rare than you think. You know, like you have your big examples of like the Transformers movie. Come here, you little goblins. Oh, sorry, Jack. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no, it's bad. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm but gonna, I'm gonna charge into everything. Absolutely. So you have Man of Steel, which you know was polarizing, we will say, <laughs> but still did well. Still did well box office wise. Then, but then you add Batman to the mix, and I think a lot of people are willing to give it another try, even if they didn't like Man of Steel. Oh, Batman's in this one. Yeah, we'll give this another yep. go. But Batman solves many problems. Batman does solve many problems. But I think there are uh, there are some people who might have been turned off twice in a row, and it's going to turn into a 
a fool me twice kind of situation, right? With Justice League? Uh-huh. Uh, I mean, I agree with what you're saying. They they won't stop making them until no, the, they stop the, making the money. The fanboys, they don't care about quality. They don't care. They care about their favorite logos, Jack. I mean, no. I mean, no. I mean you're right. You're absolutely right. My logo's on it, so I will love it. You just it. don't like the... You can't handle the new interpretation of Superman. What do you want, tights? You want to be a hero? That's childish. <laughs> <sighs> I'm an adult man. I like adult things. That's right. Super, this Superman's adult. I... Now I can play with my Superman toys because it's grown up. It's what the big kids do. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. But they won't stop making them until they stop making money. So, whenever that happens, Wonder Woman comes out first. Wonder Woman will be an interesting testing ground. What happens if we get the franchise away from Zack Snyder? He's still producing. I kind of really like this. It's been years since I've played it. You can really like it, Rich. It's okay. But... Here's what we can hope for. If 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 you are a fan of DC and are, are like and you really want a viable DC universe, right? Uh-huh. Here's what you can hope for. You can hope that Wonder Woman is an all right movie and does well at the box office and that the Justice League movie sucks and bombs at the bo box office. Because then the people at the WB will say, hey, once we had a property without Zack Snyder, it made money. And people seem to be okay with it. Maybe we should fire Zack Snyder. Because he is undoubtedly the problem. They still made money with Zack Snyder. That's what I'm saying. That's what, what you're hoping for is the non-Zack Snyder movie makes money and the next Zack Snyder movie doesn't make money. Okay. Oh, you got jetpacks. You got jetpacks now. Do get up, get back there. We got jetpacks now. They just gave David S. Goyer the new Green Lantern Corps movie. We're fucked. Yep. You are. Goyer sucks. He makes shitty movies. You're done. Never mind. R.I.P. DC Cinematic Universe. Oh, <laughs> sweet. <laughs> Sweet! <laughs> well, I guess I know what you're doing for the rest of the game. Uh, if I remember right, this is just the jump pack section, which there were a few of. Okay. So we won't be doing that for the rest of the game. Who is Goyer? David S. Goyer, who I believe wrote Man of Steel. Um... Most notably, to my concerns, uh, uh, wrote Blade, but then wrote and directed Blade 3, which is a big pile of garbage. J <laughs> achievement! 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 <laughs> he wrote Batman Begin. Well, he co-wrote Batman Begin. Didn't he? He he co-wrote all of the Batman movies, if I am correct on that. Oh, Jack, do you ever have an opinion on nerd pop culture that doesn't parallel the majority opinion? Ah, I, I don't know. Sometimes I'm sure. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I don't like Rogue One, and the majority opinion really loves Rogue One. Some people are just jerks, Jack. It's probably better not to respond to them. Oh, I don't give a fuck. I like some things that people don't, and I don't like some things that people do. Also, I'm really okay with uh, Independence Day. I know a lot, everyone says they don't like it, but I really like it. 
this is fun. Yep. Beating the dead horse, are we, Jack? Ah, I'm sure. That's what we're doing. People ask us about the things. We, gotta, I'm, I'm we talk the about things. the things. Asking the things. Asking about the thing. Jack, who would have been better to direct Watchmen? Uh, a director who could have handled uh, multiple uh, multiple characters better, uh, who understood that they weren't supposed to be badass action heroes. You know, you know who should have directed the Watchmen. Ready for this? Yeah. Darren Aronofsky should have directed the Watchmen. I'm an idiot. I'm not sure who that is. Have you seen The Wrestler? Yes. He directed The Wrestler. Okay. He also directed a bunch of other stuff. But that was, that was the one with Rick, Mickey Rourke, right? Yes. Yeah. Now I, I have seen that. Yes. Now imagine the tone of The Wrestler as The Watchmen. <laughs> Right? Yeah. That's who should have directed the fucking Watchmen. Boom. Done. Some indie movie asshole? Yes, that's what the Watchmen is about. Yeah. <laughs> if you've ever seen The Wrestler, that's the exact tone of the Watchmen. That's the exact tone. And then you give him someone to do, you know, some some light action sequences. Have him make a movie about a bunch of sad sack superheroes and the world ending. Boom. That's it. Probably needs a few more animations, but oh, I am I am attack? fine with this. Yeah, <laughs> for the for the kill for the the glory kill. Oh, sure. I'll forgive it. Um, let's see here. Blue Blaze says I I know Twitch won't allow it, but I'd watch a stream of Jack disassembling a chicken. They would probably allow it, like if there was no blood, like if I got like just a whole chicken and showed you how to how to cut it into portions. We could do a cooking. Ooh, I'm getting. Oh, you're yeah, you're almost dead. What do you think, Rich? You think Twitch would allow that? No, they would probably have an issue with it. They have a cooking show, like you said, just teach them how to disassemble a chicken. Ooh. I'm, yeah. No, no blood. You know what? Like I'm not gonna pluck feathers. I'm not gonna no, I mean, you, you cook a steak, there's blood involved. Twitch does cooking, right? Right, Twitch, Twitch has cooking. Steaks are bloody, raw steaks. But I'm saying, like, I won't, like... Well, and also, it's a super pain in the ass to pluck chicken feathers. So I'll just take a whole chicken and show you how to, how to portion it. That'd be great. If the chicken was not slaughtered on camera, it would qualify as a cooking show. Boom. This sounds like Twitch creative to me. Cooking stream? Yeah, you know, it, it, anything is possible. Anything is possible. Jack's Butcher Hour. It's, you know what? It's, it's useful information because if you eat a lot of chicken, uh, it's far cheaper just to buy the whole chicken and cut it up yourself than to buy individual stuff. Do I fight anything in this long hallway or what? Just, just a hallway. It's just a hallway. Yeah. All right. Yeah, sounds. Uh, we we uh, you know we'd have to do some work in the room here, cover some stuff in plastic and. We'd have to we'd have to figure it out, and 
Oh, I could, I could bring in, uh, we could, we could, we could go get the grill. We could do some grilling then. We could, like, grill some chicken. Oh, I could sous vide it. It'd be great. We could, I could, I could butcher. We'll toss it in the sous vide, play a game for a couple of hours, and then grill it and eat it. <laughs> we'll play a chicken game. It'll be great. Oh, I loved Black Swan. Black Swan was beautiful. Speaking of Darren Aronofsky, have you seen Black Swan? Nope. Black Swan was beautiful. A lot of things I haven't seen. That's all right. And you don't have to. Uh, Tyrant Side says, have you both seen the Killing Joke animated movie? I can't bring myself to watch it as the animation is hideously bad. I, I haven't. I've never watched it. Yeah, and I just... I, for, I, complete, I completely forgot about it. Yep. And I haven't, and I don't care because the animation looks bad, and I know, I already know how they fucked up the story, so. Uh, I, I read, you know, the comic. Rich lent me the Killing Joke comic, and I think it's a fine comic. <laughs> totally fine. Uh, Buster Load says, have some coin, ya knobs. Uh, feel like a four, like four dollars a week could be better spent, but fuck it, just fuck it. I didn't mean to do that. Anywho, Jack, what's your favorite beer and liquor? Rich, how are you at piggyback rides? LOL, rim job, Satan. I'm terrible at piggyback rides. Yeah? Yeah. All right. Well, there you go. Uh, my favorite beer uh, usually involves uh, uh, an IPA, uh, mostly because they're higher in alcohol content, so I have to drink less of them to be calorie conscious. And now I've just developed a taste for, um, for IPAs. Uh, MKE Brewing here in Milwaukee has a great IPA called Hop Freak. It's a double IPA that they brew with tea. Um, that's one of my favorites. Uh, I also really enjoy grapefruit beer with gin. I think I've talked about that a million times. As far as liquor, I'm less of a liquor person. Um, really, it's, it's probably just Jack Daniels. It's like just Jack and Coke is my drink of choice. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna have a liquor drink, I'll just drink a Jack and Coke. Um, you can detonate your shots, Rich. If you press P, I don't know what that means. Are you the king of the hipsters? No, I, f I feel like Jack and Cokes are very normal things. And then you can blow them up. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I like many things that are in the mainstream. Remember, the, the, the last person said I only like things in the mainstream, so that's very anti-hipsterish. Ah, uh, Tired and Sad says, Are David S. Goyer, Zack Snyder, and Michael Bay the best examples of assholes who fell upwards? David Goyer and Zack Snyder are. Absolutely. Zack Snyder continues, like, WB was done with him after Sucker Punch. His movies weren't making money and nobody liked him. But they just kept giving him shit. They gave him the, their biggest fucking franchise. Same with Goyer. Well, no, Go you know what? Goyer had some early hits. Goyer had some early hits and was attached to properties that did well. Michael Bay consistently made movies that made money. He did not... He, Michael Bay has not failed. He always makes movies that make money. Critics might not like him, but people sure as hell do. What are you doing? He's just sitting there. <laughs> What's he doing? I don't know. I don't care. That's fun. Yeah. So no, Michael Michael Bay is not failing upward. Michael Bay Michael Bay works. He knows what he does and he does it well. It's uh, fair to say. I I enjoy like old schlocky Michael Bay. Like The Rock is great. Bad Boys fucking awesome. Man's oh. been around a while, hasn't he? he? Oh, fuck yeah, he's been around a while. And he knows what he's doing. Um, but, you know, critics sure don't like his new movies. 
But that don't matter because other people do. Right, his films fail when he tries to make them serious, like Pain and Gain. Pain and Gain, by the way, the 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 movie starring The Rock and Mark Wahlberg about like steroid abusers who try to get into petty crime. That was a passion project for Michael Bay. Like, he had to pull strings to get that movie made. <laughs> which, which will tell you something about Michael Bay. But nah, the man knows what he's doing. Not, no failing there. I, I, Snyder is the one who is failing up. Had a, had a, a decent hit with, uh, with the remake of Dawn of the Dead. So the studio uh, let him let him try out something flashy with the 300. Turned into a, a wild success. And then he got The Watchmen and Sucker Punch. Both did not do well at the box office. WB was kind of done with him. And then somehow, AKA his agent is good friends with the head of Warner Brothers. He gets their biggest franchise. R uh, rumor has it that Zack Snyder's agent is very good friends with the president of Warner Brothers. Why did the studio give him Dawn in the first place? That's not a low-budget newbie job. Absolutely that's a low-budget newbie job. That was a... A remake, uh, that was a zombie movie. <laughs> it's a zombie movie with a recognizable title. Any Anyone can handle that. Anyone can handle that. He had, he had made some stuff. I you know, He'd made some student films, some indie stuff, and, and they hand him that. And he did fine with it. Alle yeah, allegedly. 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 Zack Snyder's agent is very, very good friends. Oh, oh I don't want to waste that. I hit the wrong button. Oh, I'm sorry. Have mercy on me. With, nope, you won't. With the, uh, with the president of Warner Brothers. And allegedly, his agent refused to leave his office until the president of Warner Brothers gave the Superman movie to Zack Snyder. And allegedly, all Zack Snyder had to do was fire his cinematographer. All right, now what? I did the thing. Now what, game? Uh, it wants you to go back there and do another thing. Oh, I, oh. Uh. The 300, I, you know what? I didn't mind the 300 because uh, I like the style of it. It was gaudy and over the top, but I felt like that's what it was going for. Watchmen's budget was 138 million, worldwide total 185 million. And they say you need to add you know, another half of the, of the budget to uh, to its advertising. So yeah, Watchmen lost money. Three hundred, I'm okay with. Like I, I like the style. I like the gaudy nature. I felt it was fitting to the story. It was over the top. You know, fitting to Frank Miller. Yeah, don't you think? It's like buff dudes thrusting people to death like it was it was over the top so I, i'm okay with 300 Three, 300 cost 65 million made 456 million shaboom the riff tracks for 300 is brilliant 
Maybe. Maybe. Buff dudes thrusting people to death. Yeah, that's all. That's all Frank Miller or that's all Zack Snyder wants. It's like the buffest dude killing people with their dicks. Oh! <laughs> that was like in his mouth. That was awesome. That was awesome. Uh, Titan says, says, although I know it's it's too well known and liked by fans to be considered for best of the worst. But Arnold's film Commando is shockingly bad. Not even cheesy, just bad. Liked it when I was a kid. Uh, you know, it's been a while. It's been a while since I've seen that. And Anonymous says, Rich. Yeah. You may be having fun. Yeah. But are you having fun correctly? No. You're not. You seem to be enjoying yourself. I know. But I hate everything. Right. I will. I, you might not be having fun correctly. Like, have you tried min maxing, uh, stat adjusting? Like, can you change <laughs> change your outfit to you know get some uh, defense buffs? Have you tried? Have you tried some of that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Great. It's been a while since I watched Commando. Yeah, I, I remember loving it. Action. That prime action schlock right there. Yeah, video overlay. Ow. Can you fix your overlay to be top and bottom bars only so we can have more screen to look at? Video overlay if you don't want to look scared too much. I mean, I might be able to shrink the blue. But I felt this was a pretty good compromise. No, no, get the guy! Yep. Yeah. I, I I have a feeling if I were to watch Commando again, I would fucking love it. But I, I like that kind of stuff, so. Uh, neither Rich and I are as big of John Carpenter fans as Jay. But then again, no one is as big of a John Carpenter fan as Jay. I like John Carpenter pretty much. I like John Carpenter. As you say, are you guys John Carpenter fans? Yeah, I'd say I'm a John Carpenter fan. Nobody as, is as big a John Carpenter fan as Jay is. I yeah, I won't make that claim, but... Right. Uh, no, Vandreth, I have not played any more Pokemon. I, I'm, I just... I just got really bored of it. I'm not enjoying the sun and moon Pokemon. Oh, boot. A boot. <sighs> the only thing I actually bought nerd swag wise was the uh, Mulder and Scully action figures. Nice. Nice. The Red Epic says my wife and I went to see Rogue One a few days ago. Spoilers. It sucked. As Trekkies, we both found it kind of embarrassing. P.S. The guy who said Commando is just as bad should probably be banned. <laughs> A lot of people don't don't quite understand the bad movies we're looking for. Command, you know, Commando's cheesy, Commando's schlocky. But it's I, not necessarily bad filmmaking. Not necessarily bad film. Not necessarily best of the over worst the top. Movie. Definitely over the top and cheesy. Yeah. There's a difference between Commando and Deadly Prey. <laughs> there you go. That's a fine comparison. A fine comparison. Oh, get these styrofoam bricks out of my way. Hey, this guy's super strong, Jack. Oh, you're right. You're right. He's got battle armor and shit. Commando's too good for best of the Probably. Commando would be perfect for, like, a review kind of thing. Yeah. That would be a good spot for it. Yeah. High Clash Lock. Ooh, I like that. 
Get on board, you schmucks. Yep. We're going up the elevator train. <laughs> the elevator train? The elevator train. Yeah. Nowhere. Hop on. Toot toot. Netflix needs a secret rating, which reads, I hate this. Give me more. <laughs> That's when you create, a, you, you know, the Netflix has the different users. Is that Fuller House? What? I hate this. Give me more. Well, no, it, if, uh, I, I think what I'm reading that as is, I, you know, this is dumb. I shouldn't like this, but I kind of like this and I want you to, I want to watch more things like this. Yeah. That's when you create a little, a separate user called dumb. And anytime you feel like watching a dumb thing, you switch over to that user, watch a dumb thing, and then your your dumb your dumb user will will gather that stuff. And that stuff is okay to watch. Everyone has those guilty pleasures. Uh oh, triggered the Star Wars fanboys. Settle down, Star Wars fanboys. Wait, what do we trigger them on now? No, the the that last tip. Where as Trekkies they didn't like oh. Star Wars. Settle down. I don't care if I trigger Star Wars fanboys. They need to, they need to grow up. I just wonder if there's going to be, you know, you because usually criticism comes in waves. And right now, it's high tide for positive reviews of Rogue One. And I, I wonder how long it's going to take to reach that point where everyone goes, you know, looking back at it, Rogue One really wasn't that great. <laughs> how long, Rich? I don't even care. Yeah. <laughs> a couple years. Do you think it's it, all it's going to take is like for the, for uh, episode eight? It'll take the next Star Wars movie they love. Right. Ah, you know, Rogue One really wasn't that great. It'll take about a year. Yeah, maybe about a year. Maybe about a year. Well, when 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 does eight come out? Is that this December, or is that next December? Uh, this I think. Oh, okay. It's every year. Is it? Yeah. Shit. Shit, Rich. Well then. Well then. If it's this year, then I, I I predict that as soon as episode eight is out, we will see we will see review pieces on on looking back at Rogue One. Did you read the uh, the official release regarding Carrie Fisher? No. Um, they Drugs? Huh? Drugs? Oh, I meant her her and her role in episode eight. Oh no, I have not. Because. Uh, she, Princess, Le or you know, General Leia, had a, had a large role in Episode Eight. Really? Yes. And so there was a big concern among people whether or not they would CG her or do something weird like that. And they came out and said they have no plans of CGing Carrie Fisher in Episode Eight, as that would. Uh, that would be they. They feel that would be disrespectful to All her. Right. So, um, has a large one. Had, had, has. Ah, god damn it! The point is, they're not. They're not going to turn her into a dumb Grand Moff Tarkin cartoon. Distracted me with too much Carrie Fisher talk, Jack, I, I'm and I sorry, died. Rich. I'm very, very sorry. But they were not that respectful when she was... Oh, she was barely in that one. That doesn't count. That doesn't count. And, and, and Peter Cushing, is that who Grand Moff Tarkin was? He's been dead for years. That's a bad idea regardless. Oh, well, it just looked bad. 
They just look. What if he didn't want to be in Rogue One? Huh? What if he didn't want to be in Rogue What if What if Peter Cushion didn't want to be too associated with Star Wars? You know, I want to distance myself from yeah. this. Mm -hmm. I had a whole other career beyond that. Sure. He's kind of sucked back in against his will. I mean, he's dead. He has no will. But, I mean, it is disrespectful. The CGI Grand Moff Tarkin. Absolutely. It's like, it's like making a musical starring Fred Astaire. <laughs> yeah. I wonder... I wonder if... Do you remember, do you remember this was years ago, the commercial, they had Fred Astaire uh, dancing with a vacuum cleaner? I do remember that. Didn't, wasn't there a lawsuit about that? I think there was. And I thought, I thought that the, like, his family won that lawsuit. So I wonder... I don't really remember enough about that. Actually, that, that makes me wonder if they somehow got permission from his family or his estate or, you know. Or if they just said, eh... He's our character. We own him forever. You own the character, but... I don't know. Uh, Spambot88, I didn't think he looked fine. I, I I, have heard from some people who said he looked fine. Uh, Grand Moff Tarkin? Yeah. No way. No I way. I don't think so. I think he looked like a, a big cartoon. It was, the, it was the worst. It was the absolute worst. Um... I, I was talking to my mother-in-law about it, who saw it with me. Yeah. It's jarring huh? when you see CGI Grandma of Tarkin. I think it is. But I talked to her about it. To be fair, she's older. Yeah. She has poor eyesight. She didn't know who I was talking about when I said the, the, the person who was all in CG. And I said, oh, that older guy, you know, the, the guy, uh, the general who was yelling at the other bad guy. She said, oh, he, oh, he's CG? Oh, my. But she's an, she's an elderly so you know her eyes are bad. To me, I thought it was—I thought it was terrible. Can we stop with the hyper hyperbole? It wasn't the worst. In no, the Polar Express was the worst. This was pretty damn bad. It well, and here's the thing: in in a situation like this, where you are integrating a CG character directly next to live action characters, I don't feel like there is a middle ground. You either do it right and it looks good or it looks bad. And if it looks bad, then it's the worst you could possibly do it. Because then it's John. Oh, bullshit. Who, died, who blew up? Oh, right when I got out of the, the kill animation, I got blown up by one of the little fuckers. Oh, the suicide pinky? Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm going to agree that, you know, hyperbole gets a little out of hand, but I'm also going to defend Rich Evans in saying that it is the worst simply because it does not work. When it takes you out of the film because it looks so jarring, yes. you shouldn't have done it. Right. Oh, what was he doing up there? <laughs> he got a little stuck up there. But, you know, at least in the Polar Express, like, everyone's a horrifying cartoon, right? Yeah. So that's yeah. not a big deal. I don't know how anyone was okay with CGI Grand Moff Tarkin. I agree. The minute you see it, you don't say there's Grand Moff Tarkin. You say, oh, there's CGI Grand Moff Tarkin. Yes, there's Roger Rabbit. Yes! How funny that the actors mimed along with him. Oh, this will make great behind-the-scenes footage. When it's distracting, mm -hmm. it's a bad special effect. Yes. Yes. I agree, Rich. Len, I don't feel like I'm misrepresenting your views. I'm, I'm just talking about the hyperbole, and we went off on that. The Blue Blaze says, I had two ideas for Best of the Worst episodes. Famous Bad Edition with The Room, Birdemic, and Manos, Hands of Fate. And Masturbation Edition with three movies you guys were in some way involved with. What? Bad movies we were so in some way involved with. I don't think there are that many movies we were in some way involved with is the problem. Uh, Cosper is uh, uh, saying, you know, it's it's not just 
It's not just Grand Moff Tarkin, the CGI uh, tentacle monster in The Force Awakens. Yeah, that was distracting thing. too. I wasn't a fan of that. Right. Right, but yeah, we just happen to be talking about Grand Moff here, but any any bad CG. I don't know why people think I love The Force Awakens. Remember, all all of Red Letter Media is one unit, right? You're right. Right, exactly. I was the dissenting voice that episode. Yeah. I still liked it. I just didn't love it. <laughs> And Yonder Yonder says, I think people who aren't used to computer graphics are okay with Tarkin. You should do a survey. Have everyone say if they were okay with it, whether or not they are avid gamers. I bet there's a pattern. Eh, maybe. Oh. Yeah. This is a tough one. It is. This is a tough one. I wonder. I wonder about that. Like I said, you know... My wife's mom didn't even notice it, but to be fair, she has pretty poor eyesight. Like, you know, she doesn't drive at night poor eyesight, so... Right. If you defend that effect, you have to be a troll. I, I can't believe anybody thought, oh, good! I, I think some people genuinely thought it did. No, no, it's so off-putting, yeah. so out of place, and you gotta be, you gotta be lying. I don't, I don't believe you if you like that effect. Um, uh, Marcel Dolanda, uh, I'm, I'm editing one right now. Rich and I did a, uh, a previously recorded the other day, and I'm working on editing it right now. I also have another job I'm working on right now, so it's going to be slow going. I'm hoping to have it up before I leave for Madison this weekend, so. Uh, if not, it'll be early next week. But I'm, we're, it's it's a fun episode, a fun, a fun previously recorded. It was a good conversation we had. Uh, Got some troll. Got some trolls in here. Got some Tarkin trolls. Hold on, Rich. X Mensa says, from the Independent, literally today. The biggest talking point coming out of Rogue One, a Star Wars story, was undoubtedly its breathtaking use of CGI, which recreated Peter Cushing and a young Carrie Fisher so perfectly as to raise ethical questions with regards to using actors' likenesses after their death. Recreating them so perfectly. That's crazy. No. You could start editing it right now? Well, I could. I could start editing it right now, but more likely I'm going to go home and go to bed. I think we're going to give Rich one more chance with this. Yes. Yeah. yeah. See if he can get past this section. Well, I know I've done it before. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I also wonder, like, uh, if watching it in 3D played any difference, where everything kind of looks weird and cartoony. <laughs> Someone said they didn't notice, but they were wearing th the 3D uh, goggles. Maybe that had something to do with Maybe it. Maybe that could help, is what I'm... Yeah, that could help uh, put some Vaseline on the lens. <laughs> They make clip-on 3D glasses for movie theaters? I would love that. I hate putting on those stupid glasses over my glasses. I'd rather just not go to a 3D movie. Yeah, I, I suppose. Uh, Tiberius Kirk uh, is, is not trolling and saying genuinely, uh, genu genuinely was okay with Tarkin. Yeah, yeah. I don't get it. Yeah. Uh, neither do I. Incoming fire. You excited about Lego Batman movie? Uh, I don't know if I'm excited, but it might be fun. I'm excited. Of course, I got I have kids, so. 
you know, kids are super excited about Lego Batman movie. The funny part is they were they were watching some Netflix movie the other day called The Nut Job. It's the movie about the squirrels who go on a heist caper. Yeah. And, like, you know, they're watching this movie. I wasn't watching it with them. They're watching the movie. And all of a sudden, like, my oldest goes, Hey, that squirrel's Batman. Because Will Arnett does the voice of one of the squirrels in the nut job. And I was like, oh, yeah, the same guy voices me. He goes, no, that's Batman from Lego Batman. And, you know, how do you explain that to a kid? Like, no, well, it's the same voice actor doing, doing uh, yeah, 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 it's Batman. It's great. <laughs> We, then we then we watch the trailer for the new Lego Batman movie, and I just I'm so excited about it. It looks great. The nut job sequel is called the Manhole. <laughs> Hey guys, says the Red Epic. The next gen question of the night. How do you feel about the character Q? He seems to be either despised or loved by the Trek community. I personally think he had a, a lot of worth. I like you. Yeah, I didn't know there were people who despise him. Uh, you know. Oh, fuck this! Oh, God. Jesus Christ, is there another one up top? I could see how, like, hard sci-fi fans might think he's a little too magic-y. Roll away! I can't! <laughs> oh, God, Rich! Roll away! <laughs> Skin of your teeth. Oh. Uh, but I also like Q. I think he had some really fun episodes. Also, like his introduction episode is great. Farpoint. Oh, that's the first episode. Yeah. Yeah, that's fun. Ah, uh. uh, the the whole he testing humanity thing. That's great. That's fun. That's fun. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna look up Laksa. What are you? I know you keep talking about Laksa. I'm gonna look this up. Con considering Con Trek's usual philosophy of of throwing down religion and humanity, doing it on its own. Yeah. It kind of shits on that a bit once Q becomes more benevolent in later seasons. Okay. Like Q from early Trek from Farpoint is a very different cue from the cue from the uh, Tapestry episode. Where he lets Picard find out what life would be like if he hadn't been so bold. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. It, uh, cue stories go from Picard getting one up on Q. Because he's right after all, and yeah. Q is wrong. And, and it turns into, it devolves into Picard asking Q for help. Yeah. Because Q is looking after humanity. Yeah, I could see that. I could see I, that's where I could see some fans. I, I still like him as a character, but I, yeah. I can understand like thematically mm -hmm. how that can be off-putting if you're normally a fan of Trek's values. Yeah, 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 yeah. But also some fun episodes. Yeah, some fun Q episodes. And Tybee Kirk, I, I am easier on season one of Next Gen than Rich is. I, I, I think there's some good in, I know. in season one. So no, but uh, I, Tybee Kirk says, you know, wait, Jack admitted there was a good one in season one. I like season one. Rich does. Yeah. Remember, we're different people. Yeah. Um, season one, I don't think ever climbs out of mediocrity at best. Mm -hmm. no, and cool. I think that's probably where Farpoint is. Mediocrity at best. Mostly because John Delancey is Q. Hmm? Hmm. All right. All right. Hey, yeah, I think, I think we're done. Let's think thank some people. That was, that was great. You, you beat the thing. 
this looked like a fun game. Then we need um, we need an accurate. We don't have the subs from early on after we crashed. Son of a bitch. Yeah, I know. We got to figure that shit out now. I, you know what? I just have to. I, I got to put it on the laptop. I will. I will work on that. Yeah. We have to remember. We have to remember to get it on the laptop. Let's watch her. I think Let's that's watch a, her. I think that's a good idea. Great. Uh, Nico Cola says, uh, hi, Rich and Jack. Jack, on your next visit to LA, what are you visiting first? Silver Lake Ramen or Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles? Uh, Gobbledygooks, thank you for uh, uh, Space Hulk Deathwing. Oh, yeah. They, they, he said, but be careful, though. This is going to test the limits of your graphics card. I can handle it. All right, all right. I can handle That's it. That's what they say. Uh, I'll probably go to Silver Lake Ramen first um, and Roscoe's. Gift may already have been redeemed. Oh, there you go. Just a weird. I don't know about that. I, I, somebody might have stolen the gift. Is that possible? That is not possible. Is that possible? That is not possible. It's not in her. It's not in her. You didn't redeem it. Let's see if that was. Now, yeah, there you go. You forgot to hit that button. No, I did hit that button. It oh, said this may, yeah. gift may have been redeemed. It said that. It's fine. Everything's fine. If, if uh, oh, wait, we can, you know what we can do? We can do, uh. We can do this. Subs. Boom. Thank you, Hackbot. Thank you, Hackbot. All right. I got him. I got him on the lapper topper. Okay. <clears throat> Holy Carlemange. Carlemange? Holy Carlemange. Oh, well, I can't read it when it's waving around. It's, no, it's just move it all around. Move it all around. Waving around and moving all around. Soup Pilgrim. Liquid 80. Oh, my God. I almost dropped that. <laughs> Coffee Spots. <laughs> Vid Shadow. I'm just going to do a few of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes Great. sense. On Kool Aid Man for 27 fucking months in a row. Your streams really help me make it through the drudges of winter. Thank you, guys. Favorite customer, Smile. Your uncandid, candid camera. TC209. Blavad. I hope this money will be used to help treat Jack's spreadsheet addiction. One, the, the spreadsheet about which episode did and did not contain a bassoon was made <laughs> by Leftover Beefcake. <laughs> Two, it was incredibly helpful to all of us looking for the bassoon. There is nothing wrong with proper organization. Okay. Nothing at all. Okay. I, I, uh, and Lizard Wizard, Lizard Wizard is where I stopped. Lizard Wizard. Ensolanian! Oh, okay, okay. All right, Purple Space Bazooka 24. Huh? I was just fucking with you. Oh, I only need more than one. Well, I'll read this one now. 24 <laughs> fucking months in a row. Holy crow, 24 fucking months <laughs> with my favorite hack frauds. Thank you for all you guys do, and may your 2017 not suck royally. Always forward, forward always. Mr. Shieldsy says, what? What? Rebel Base says, I love listening to your guys' banter over games. Well, thank you. Thank you. Savage Engine. Slapnuts 73. Tofu Ace says, yo, ho, ho. <laughs> Just wanted to thank you all for being my true base. Also, Nintendo's new gimmick is AIDS. Me personally, I give it a nine out of ten. <laughs> I get it. Couleur de liqueur. Grand Moff Collie. Twenty-seven <laughs> fucking months in a row. When, when are we gonna get CGI Grand Moff Collie? <laughs> get on that. CGI Grand Moff Collie. <laughs> Ragged Scribe, 17 months, says, 
I'm 17 now. Magnus P.U., 24 fucking months in a row says, two fucking years? Oh my god! Rich. Yeah? Blind Fury Yeah. is getting a Blu-ray release. Sweet. <laughs> sweet. <laughs> fucking sweet. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, that, that means a lot to you. It does. <laughs> Geki Gangerv! Lady Denning! 14 months! Very top. Space Jack 2084. It's like the texture of pudding, only for your ears. That's what I'm talking about. Dan Man 6280. Ivan Zeist says, Khan! <laughs> Fresno Bob says, Enjoying my four month sub, even though I'll be dead from cholesterol in two years. Ho Fibu! My name is Tate. 19 months in a row. 19 months? It's almost my 20th motherfucking month in a fucking row fucking anniversary. Fuck. Hunchback Jack, 20 fucking months in a row. Looking forward to at least 20 more months of no orcs in space. Thanks, Rich and Jack. Yonder, yonder in the chat, I, I agree with you about Star Trek Insurrection. It was the most, most faithful TNG movie to what TNG was. I agree fully. Mm -hmm. Denzo Washington, two days from retirement. Dig lit i dude, dig lit i dude, n g is the full name there. Mr. Tummy Giggles. <laughs> That's a good one. I like that. Uh, Andrew Gustly, coffee for mana. Oz Mike, 25 fucking months in a row. Insert witty comment here someplace. I, I got nothing. Generations was a clumsy, awful movie where they killed Kirk in the dumbest way ever. It's just weird. Uh, uh -huh. First Contact is a stupid action movie. It's a very stupid action movie, and they also managed to ruin everything that was interesting about the Borg. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, Nemesis is depressing and dark for the sake of being depressing and dark, and it mm -hmm. also becomes a dumb action movie. Mm -hmm. That's very true. The plot of Insurrection, while they sh while they schlock it up and there's there's they add in the dumb action parts like a TNG episode never would have ended in a fist fight with Picard and the bad guy. Mm -hmm. Thematically, it's something they would have done on the show with the ethics of Starfleet and the Fountain of Youth, and it, it's the closest. It's not perfect by any means, but it's the closest the TNG movies ever got to being what the next generation is or was hmm. I, no that's fair that's my that's my piece that's a, that's a, that's totally fair where do we leave off uh i was like i said okay that's a penny top ramens 23 fucking months in a row says almost two years of rlm entertainment rom ramens lulls top fix the arc matter 18 months, says two months until fucking. <laughs> Dr. Soyanese, 21 fucking months in a row, says Rich, Jesus loves you. Disco King. So you got that going for you. <laughs> <laughs> How does he love me? He's been dead for 2,000 years, if he even existed. Well, that, well yeah, um, uh, he loves you from afar then. <laughs> <laughs> From very far. <laughs> the Traveler Speaks, if I didn't say that one before. And also Disco <laughs> King, because I forgot where I was left off. <laughs> Budget Messiah says, for the Emperor. And that was all. That was it. That was everyone. Thank you for subscribing. We really appreciate it. It's true. We really do. All right. I gotta awkwardly end the stream because I'm nowhere near the mouse. Oh, well then. I'll just stare at the camera. 
This will be awkward for the minute it takes me to get to the right thing. No, no, I'm just waiting. It's very awkward. No bit. We're just, this, we're just awkward like this. <laughs>